everyone. Grab your comfy pillows. Comfy pillows. Hey, my shirt matches my pillow today. They're the same color. That's really fun. <laughs> Today's story is called I don't want to talk about it. Have you ever had something that you just don't want to talk about? Maybe it's something that makes you sad, happy, worried, angry, or scared. Have you ever had something that you don't want to talk about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of things that we don't want to talk about, but sometimes it feels good after we let our feelings out or we take a calm moment or we find our peaceful place. Sometimes it feels good to talk about things. Would you like to find out what this friend doesn't want to talk about? Okay, let's get started. I don't want to talk about it. What are they doing here? Oops. <laughs> They're yelling, yeah. I thought it was coming. I was afraid it was coming. But when I did when it did, I still couldn't believe it. I didn't want to believe it. We need to talk to you about something, my father said. He and my mother sat across from each other, like two birds on a telephone wire, with me in the middle. I just kept reading my book, trying not to hear, not wanting to hear. My mother placed her hand gently alongside my face. Like she does when I've had a bad dream. I wished this was a bad dream. Your father and I are getting a divorce, she said. I wanted to pull my whole body inside a shell like a turtle so that my mother's words couldn't hurt me, especially that one word, divorce. So our friend here, they wanna hide from something like a turtle does from the word divorce. You've probably noticed that your mother and I haven't been getting along very well, my father said. We tried very hard to work out our differences, my mother said quietly, but we weren't able to. I remembered the nights I wanted to be an elephant so that I could crash through my parents' door and stop their mad, bad words. I don't want to talk about it, I said. So our friend's parents are fighting, using their words, they're arguing, and they wanted to crash in and stop their words like an elephant would. It must be hard to hear us tell you this, my mother said. Talking about it might help. She ran her fingers through my hair, like she always did, does when I feel sad or upset. I don't want to talk about it, I said. I wanted to toss my mane and run away like a wild horse, run as fast as the wind, as far as I could go. A friend wants to run away, not have that conversation, not talk about it.
you're probably going to have a lot of different feelings, my mother said. Most kids do when this happens. I don't want to talk about it, I said. I wanted to be prickly like a porcupine so that I couldn't be hurt by anything or anybody anymore. It's okay to feel mad, my father said. I don't want to talk about it, I said. I wanted to be a crocodile and gobble both of my parents up and their terrible, terrible news. I wanted to gobble it all up. They want to make the information, the words they're hearing, go away. They're going to try to eat them like a crocodile could. It's okay to feel sad, too, my mother said. I don't want to talk about it, I said. I wanted to be a fish so that my tears could fall into the river and no one would know how much I wanted to cry. I feel very sad, too. It's okay to feel scared. I don't want to talk about it, I said. I want it to be a lion with a roar so loud that everyone would think I was very brave. None of this is your fault, my father said. It's a grown-up problem just between your mom and me. Your dad and I have a lot, have had a lot of disagreements lately, my mother said. But one thing we, will, we never disagree about is how, how wonderful you are and how much we love you. And then they say this very loud, like a lion, so loud their parents are covering their ears. Ready? Cover your ears, it might be a little loud. I don't want to talk about it! I shouted like a lion. The room got very quiet. My mom reached out her arms. I moved a little bit closer. And my dad did too. I wanted to be a baby kangaroo and ride in your pocket, I said to them. That way, we couldn't leave you, my mom said. I nodded. She understood how I was feeling. I will always be your mom, and dad will always be your dad, she said, and we will never leave you. pushed away from my mother's arms and rolled off the bed. I pretended to look out the window. It was spring. The robins were flying back from their winter homes. Talking about it might help, my mom said. I saw a bird hopping around our backyard, searching for something. I'd like to be like that robin and fly away from all of you. I cried. My dad said gently, Mom and I would fly after you and make sure you're safe and bring you home. My mom and dad came over to the window and stood next to me. We watched the robin inspect the birdhouse my dad and I made last year. Where am I going to live? 
I wondered out loud. You'll live with me part of the time, and part of the time you'll live with Dad, said my mom. We'll work it out so that you'll be spending time with the both of us every week. We'll see each other a lot, my dad said. And you can talk to mom or me on the phone whenever you want. When I'm with you, we'll still cook and play checkers and go to the movies like always, I asked. Like always, I asked my dad. That won't change. So yes, they'll still get to do the things they like to do. And when I'm with you, Will we still garden and read and go on walks like always? I asked my mom. That won't change either, said my mom. So much had changed so fast. I was glad to hear that some things would stay the same. My dad said, we'll be living in different houses, but I think they'll be happier houses. I hoped so. So, I guess I'll kind of be like the robin with two places to live. Kind of, my mom said, and you'll be loved wherever you are. I reached out and I gave mom and dad a little bear hug. And I got a big bear hug right back. The end. So in our story today, our friend's parents, they were together. Their parents were together but when they were together, they were angry, yelling, and fighting, and it just wasn't a happy home. So they decided to come apart and live in different homes. Home with a mom and a home with a dad. Some families don't have just a mom and a dad. Some families have a mom and a mama, a daddy and a papa, or just a mama or just a daddy. But this family had a mom and a dad. So instead of having one angry home, they have two happy homes. Things changed, but the things that didn't change were the special things, the special time that they spend together, the activities that they like to do, like gardening and reading and playing checkers and getting yummy food. And most importantly, they still love their child. They still love the kid. Mommy still loves the daughter. And Daddy still loves the daughter. Their love will never change for their kid. And it's, it's nice to hear that you're still loved sometimes, especially when things are changing and you're not really sure what you're feeling. Our friend felt like a lot of different animals trying to figure out how they wanted to feel or how they were feeling. Like a crocodile to eat everything up and make it go away. Like a turtle to hide away. Like a lion to be so loud nothing else could be heard and to feel brave. Or like a horse to run away and be free and not hear the words that her parents were saying. Sometimes it's easier to talk about our emotions like an animal, explaining I feel like I want to hide like a turtle. I don't want to be here anymore hiding like a turtle would go in its shell. Or you feel really loud and angry like a lion and you just want to ah, scream. So next time that you're feeling 
a big feeling and you might not know how to talk about it, maybe use an animal to explain it. And also, if your family is going through that word divorce, or if you don't know what it means, it's okay to ask your adults about it. And it's okay to ask questions. And it's okay to be angry or scared or confused or just not want to talk about it at all. It's okay to not want to talk about things sometimes. It's okay to take your time thinking about what you're feeling and figuring out what animal or person you're feeling like. That's what our friend did in the story today. Her parents were going through a divorce, going from an angry home to two happy homes. And it took some time to figure out what they were feeling. And that's okay. Let's close off today's story time with three breaths. Let's do a belly breath. We haven't done a belly breath in a while. Place one hand on your heart. Move it around. Feel the bumping. And let's place our other hand on our bellies. Okay, let me scoot back so you can see my belly. Ready? Take a big belly breath in. Make your belly really big and out. Let's breathe in through our nose, out through our mouth. Ready? Big belly breath in through your nose. And out through your mouth. Last one. Let's make it really juicy. Big belly breath in. And out. Thank you for reading with me today. I'll see you next time.